If you talk to leaders in the region, Joe, uh, what they tell you when they meet with Putin is Putin says, hey, look, I'm getting no pushback. Uh, I have no price to pay for what I'm doing. It's playing really well domestically as we have other issues that uh, this uh, sort of cloud. So, um, you know, I think it's going to continue. That was Senator Bob Corker on Morning Joe back in February, calling for a tougher U.S. stance against Vladimir Putin. The Russian president spoke yesterday with President-elect Trump about building a, quote, strong and enduring relationship. And the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Corker, joins us now. Mike Barnacle, Michael Steele, and Steve Schmidt all back with us as well. Senator, good to have you on the show this morning. Uh, always great to be with you. Thank you. Uh, so good to be with you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's start by talking about U.S.-Russian yeah. relations. Uh, yeah. What do we need to be focusing on over the next four years? Uh, certainly aggression in the region has been problematic for us, but look, I'm seriously, I, the, we have a lot in common with the people of Russia. Uh, you've been there, you understand that, and if there are ways that we can build a stronger relationship, I, I think that would be great. They have the same issues relative to terrorism to confront that we do, and I think it's always good when the leader of the United States and the leader of a, an important country like Russia begin on a, on a good foot. So. Uh, Hopefully this, this will lead to different behavior also on behalf of Russia and Putin. Can I ask you about the Iran deal? Obviously, it's yeah. been an issue that's been at the center of Donald Trump's yeah. campaign, promising to get rid of the Iran deal. Uh, right now, uh, what do you consider to be the status of that Iran deal? Uh, the president yeah. said last week that the Iranians are adhering to all the terms yeah. of the deal. Is that true? They're not, and the UN Security Council has stated that. They haven't acted against them yet, but there's no question as it relates to uh, ballistic weaponry, as it relates to uh, uh, the testing that's taking place. Uh, you know, they have not adhered to the, to the agreement. I think what I heard the president elect say during the campaign is. When he got elected, he would look at it um, and decide then what to do. Um, at least that's what I remember him saying. I will say at least we do have a new day where, where Congress and the White House will be pushing back against uh, some of the violations that are taking place. That's at a minimum, and I think people welcome that. Uh, you, were, you obviously tried to forge a bipartisan uh, response to what the president was doing on the issue. It got undermined. Do yeah. you believe that uh, that we should overturn the deal? Do you think we should reform it, make it better? What do you think we should do with yeah. the Iran deal? So I, I didn't, you know, we gave up, Joe, as you know, all of our leverage on the front end when we gave away the monies that were stashed in various countries around the world. And so now the leverage is with them. I think the beginning point is for us to cause them to strictly adhere. And I think that what we have to remember is we have to keep the Europeans and others with us in this process. And I think demonstrating the violations that are taking place, demonstrating that we're going to push back and hold them accountable, but also pushing back against the terrorist acts that they're involved in in the region, pushing back against their aggression in the region. Uh, what the agreement explicitly allows is for us to push back against those activities. And and the, the White House has been unwilling to do so. So I think you're going to see greater engagement by Republicans and Democrats. Many of the Democrats, Joe, you know, felt like they were hamstrung uh, with a White House that was unwilling to push back uh, in the manner that I just described. I think you're going to see that freeing up. And obviously, the first thing we have to do is pass the Iran Sanctions Act and extend it for another 10 years because it does, in fact, expire at the end of this year. Okay, Senator, Mike uh, Senator, you just referenced it, but there are five other countries in on this deal, some of them yeah. doing increasingly. Uh, increasing amounts a lot of, of commerce. Business. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, yeah. what do you do about getting those five other countries to go along, uh, you, you know, yeah. with, with whatever you, we want to do in, in yeah. amending this deal? Yeah. So, that makes it difficult. And again, that's why the deal to me was such a bad deal. We gave up all of our leverage. Uh, we knew that France and many of the other countries were pursuing this for commercial reasons, which we're seeing at this time. And so, that's why, again, it's, it's going to take 
tough diplomatic effort pushing back by us against uh, some of the violations that are taking place, even if we have to do so independently. But doing so in a way that people understand is rational. I mean, we do have to conduct ourselves moving ahead, keeping p folks together in a rational manner. And that's actually what I heard President-elect Trump say uh, during the debates. As a matter of fact, I think he was the only one who said that. So going, going forward, tough diplomatic efforts, that would seem to call for an incoming Secretary of State who, know, who certainly has to be tough, but knows yeah. a bit about how to be diplomatic as well. Um, I mean, that's what the post is. I mean, it's a, hopefully <laughs> the, the Secretary of State will come into an environment where they can be productive around the world in advancing our, our country's national interest. It's a very important role. Uh, when we do so effectively, what we really do is we keep the men and women in uniform that we have, that we love and respect from entering into kinetic activity, being involved in, in situations where their lives are at stake. And so, look, uh, it's a very important post, and I know that they're looking at this uh, very closely. Mr. Chairman, it's Willie Guy. Since you didn't pick yeah. up on Mike's leading question, I'll, 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 I'll try again. Yeah. A lot of people are pointing as they look at the newspaper and see that Rudy Giuliani's name and John Bolton's names are being floated. Yeah. For Secretary of State, by, they're by looking. Rudy Giuliani. They're now, looking now. at someone who's there as Chair of Foreign Relations, uh, uh, someone who's got a decade of experience now with war in Washington and foreign policy, and they see your name right there. Is that a job you'd be interested in, Senator? Well, look, uh, Willie, and I think Joe would respond the same way as would everybody on your set. Uh, if someone felt that there was going to be an environment where they could productively advance our nation's interest around the world in so many ways, um, I, I think most people would have an interest at the same time. Uh, you know, I realize that there are people who've been central to the campaign, uh, which I was not. Highly involved, I supported, but I wasn't a central person like so many others. And I realize that it's likely that one of those people who have been so centrally involved in this campaign uh, yeah. is more likely to be in that position. Has so. the Trump transition team reached out to you, Senator? We've had some conversations uh, with them. I think you know there's a, there's a funded effort by taxpayers for both Republicans and Democrats that sort of pro the professional side. And then you have the political side, which is uh, taking hold right now. And certainly there have been conversations. But look, I'm, I'm getting my information uh, from people like you and some of the reports that I'm reading in publications. And um, I guess we'll just see what happens when this is all over. But it's a very important post and one that really matters greatly to the safety and security of Americans and, by the way, the economic uh, interest of Americans and something that I'm glad they're taking their time to look at it and make sure they have exactly the right person uh, in there. Steve Schmidt. Uh, Mr. Chairman, good morning. Uh, speaking good morning. of the safety and security of Americans, in this election, by the consensus of the intelligence agencies of this country, we had a hostile foreign power, Russia, attempting to interfere in the election yeah. process uh, with cyber attacks on important institutions. Can we expect in the new Congress that you will convene hearings to look at this very, very seriously? Well, I think there'll definitely be hearings, and just for what it's worth, uh, uh, Senator Cardin, who I have a great relationship with, who's a ranking member on our committee, we went down during the period of time where people were discussing this and had a classified briefing. And I, I mean, Steve, you're, I know, a very sophisticated guy, and, and you do know that countries, sophisticated countries, um, do do things. Um, and there is espionage and there are activities that take place between large and sophisticated countries. Um, never was it stated in these that it was Russia. Uh, my sense is it likely was, but uh, the fact is that, no, I think people will take it seriously and there'll be numbers of hearings to truly understand what has occurred here. But I just want to say one more time, I mean, in the world of covert activities, uh, countries, uh, large, sophisticated countries uh, do things um, against each other to, to understand what's happening within those countries. And I, I think people who have been around for a while understand that's what happens. Of course, Senator, I agree with that completely. Obviously, we were caught, the United States, eavesdropping on the Chancellor of Germany's phone calls, a NATO ally. But 
maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on this. I don't think there's ever been an instance where a hostile foreign power has ever tried to overtly interfere in the outcome of a U.S. election by yeah. putting their thumb on the scale. Do you, do you think that the nature of those attacks in this election yeah. was unprecedented or typical? I think well, what was unprecedented, Steve, was the fact that they uh, did so, so overtly. Um, the fact is that there's nothing that Putin would like more than to discredit the electoral process here in our country because, um, and look, we, we in some ways helped discredit their process back in 2011. And so there's no question, I mean, what was unprecedented about this was the overt nature. Um, I think, again, things constantly are occurring where countries are doing things to, uh, to in some ways, destabilize. I mean, it happens. Uh, we know that. Can, can, I, can and, I break and a code it, for it, you? It, uh, I mean, yeah. what you aren't saying and what you won't say is we do it, Russia does it, China does it, Israel does it, and we're doing it at each other every day. Um, obviously, it, the, the this, was, this was, was unique. Was a, it was very unique that the way it was done was done in a manner to, uh, to, to be visible to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a new step, and I really do think, and, and I do believe they were involved. I have no proof of that at present. I do believe they were involved. Um, and I do believe that uh, it was purposefully done to try to embarrass and to discredit. What, what's interesting is the people of Russia were watching all of this and watching what they thought was, quote, a rigged election. Uh, again, I'm just repeating, I'm not giving an observation myself, but a rigged election towards a particular candidate, in this, in this case, Secretary Clinton. And then all of a sudden, uh, someone one who no one thought was going to win and in many ways it backfired on Putin because now the people of Russia understand hey there there is a real democratic process here in our country and even though things may look like they're gonna there's gonna be a certain outcome different things can happen mm -hmm. so look um, but we we need to pay attention and Steve I'm not in any way dismissing what you're saying and there will be hearings and obviously the integrity of our process is something that we hold dearly Senator Bob Corker, thank you so thank much you. Uh, for thank being you. on this morning. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.